Blevins here with an overview of the, uh, I guess, quote-unquote, deload week. Um, one of the options that I gave and have kind of worked through myself is uh, upping the intensity a little bit on the deload week while decreasing the volume. So I actually only worked out three times this week instead of four and cut out a lot of the assistance work. Um, on one of the days I went in, I was hoping to do more on bench press than I had ever done, and yet you see here that 495 was extremely slow, definitely complete RP10. Um, I then also was planning on going a little heavier with conventional block pulls um, for a single, but when I got to 585, I called it there. Uh, I just felt a little heavy and decided to put that as the end of the day. Um, one thing I'll say about that bench, I did weigh out the plates a little bit just to compare because two of those red 45s always feel heavier than the other ones. And I decided uh, to actually check it out and found out that they're each about five pounds heavier than all of the other red plates. So that may have actually been uh, more than 495 or less if the other plates are just light, not 100%. But uh, it was kind of interesting to see how uh, just which plates I happened to use for the PRs um, mattered. Uh, I then went uh, later in the week, this was after Thanksgiving, about three days after those bench presses in that block pull, uh, for a high bar six rep PR. Uh, this is how the PRs are supposed to happen, as I've talked to other people. It's actually supposed to be for sixes, not for singles. I've been testing singles uh, to try to figure out how I'm going to set up my meat preparation uh, for a meat that I'm looking at in February. But I'm not sure, that was a, I guess that was a 495 pound PR uh, for high bar squats, because I don't think I had ever recorded a six rep PR though my old 5 rep PR was 460. Uh, so no matter what, it was a huge PR for high bar. I then decided to work up to a single uh, that kind of felt a little heavy just to see if I should uh, think about using uh, high bar as a competition form in this upcoming meet. After this 605, uh, which moved really well, I would say, uh, this was my old PR for high bar. Um, I'm just stronger low bar. Uh, I can use more back, lever. my leverages are a little bit better, um, and so I'll probably stick with that for uh, competition at this point, but that was still a very good 6.05, uh, especially without a tape or anything, and for going pretty heavy last week. Um, regardless, it moved pretty well. I then set a 10-pound PR on a close grip bench uh, with 3.75 here. Uh, for six, it was a little tough, but it was probably like an RP9, and so I decided to go up and use a little bit wider grip and try for a rep PR close to my competition bench. Uh, you'll see on this set that it was definitely RP10. Uh, I was able to get the reps done, but it was very close. That rep right there was probably a RP9.25, and then it went to full on 10. That's about as slow as it can go on my bench press. But I did get it locked out, did not have to rack before I uh, finished the rep. I then moved on. Um, I was kind of waffling back and forth if I should go for a six rep PR on conventional because I was a little tired, but I decided to be conservative, just pull 495. The most I had done for a triple conventional previous to this was 505. So this is three more reps, 10 less pounds, and it moved really, really easy. I was using straps to save my hands. So I decided to just, just maybe see what 585 felt like um, for some reps uh, since 635 moved so easily. And the first rep really moved well. Uh, my lockout, I felt like, was really working well. I was wedging my hips through at the top, and the uh, pull was being, uh, is becoming more, uh, I guess, optimal. And so I just kept going with it. But I did start to have some uh, mid to upper back rounding, and especially on this last rep, I probably shouldn't have done it because that's more back rounding than I want to see uh, from anybody, including myself. But 585 for 6 ties my best sumo set for 6 as well. So that was a really interesting thing. Um, so on to Christian ethics. As promised, uh, we're going to get into some application stuff now. And I want to start with Philippians 2. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being in one spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Now, I've been talking a lot about the members of the Trinity and how they relate to each other and how the Father sets the example that the Son follows. Now, this doesn't mean that the Son was created at some point, 
or that the Son is somehow a separate God. What this means is, is that just as the Son is obedient to the will, to the actions, to the words, to the commands of the Father, so also human beings are to have that same mindset that we can see Christ Jesus having. And as Jesus was always obedient to the Father's will, even when he did not want to do it, he was obedient to the Father. This gives us the way in which humanity can image God. Because as we are obedient to the Father, we image the Son. It is that member of the Trinity that humanity is allowed and created to image. So this ultimately is what the, the Christian doctrine of humanity is, of what our purpose is, is that we are to find ourselves as followers of Christ, and that in our relationships with each other, we image the Son. Um, we do this as we are taught by God to be like God, and our relationships to each other are not just any sort of relationships. They are relationships of respect, of submission, and of care and concern for the other and I use kind of like the other as any other. Another word that has been used for that is your neighbor. And who is your neighbor? Anyone who is around you within your sphere of influence is your neighbor. And you are to consider the needs of others above the needs of yourself. That's what it means to be a Christian and to be a follower of Christ. Now, I'll continue on in another video and we'll continue this Philippians 2 because Right after this verse, um, Paul goes in, and it's actually it's in a poetic structure, but he describes just how Jesus cared for the needs of others before his own needs. And that is at the core of how Christian ethics and praxis comes to play in our behavior. And uh, I'll, I'll continue with some more comments on that. But it is this link to God this aspect of having the same mind or mindset that Christ Jesus had in ourselves that allows human beings to image God. Not to become God, not to take on power, authority, or divinity, but to participate in the same spirit, into the same relationship, the same behavioral pattern as the second member of the Trinity, the Son, the Logos, uh, the Word, Jesus Christ. In any case, I hope wherever you're at, you're doing well, and if anybody has any questions, feel free to put them below. Blessings.